Hello and welcome to La Rosa Reads. I'm Denise La Rosa and today I am sharing all of my February reading plans. Let's talk books. I am so happy with this February TBR. I am so happy that I've whittled down the number of how many books I'm going to have on my TBR every month. Sharing these five books with you, I'm feeling pretty confident that I'll be able to tackle them and leave rooms for some mood reads, which is a win-win. Let's get started. The first book that I plan to read in February is African Town. This is a book that has been in my physical TBR since I purchased it from Uncle Bobby's last April and I've been wanting to dive in and I just feel it in my spirit that February 2024 is the time to do just that. First of all, let's appreciate this cover. It's simply beautiful. This book is one that I think I was going back and watching old videos of Olive's from a book Olive and she mentioned African Town and I was intrigued and a little embarrassed that I had never heard of the book. Lo and behold, like months later, I found myself at Uncle Bobby's, this independent bookstore in Philly, and this was like right on display. So I thought it was meant to be. The year is 1859, and though the transatlantic slave trade has been banned for more than 50 years, the enslavement of black people still fuels the American economy. But Southern plantation owners now face the threat of a civil war and the end of slavery. Timothy can't conceive of such a disruption to his way of life. He resents government interference in his right to make a living. Against this backdrop, he makes a bet with another businessman that he can smuggle enslaved Africans into the United States without being caught. Soon, he has commissioned what is now known as the last slave ship. Wrenched from their homes in what is now been in, the 110 African captives on board this ship face an uncertain fate. Among these souls are five vibrant men and women whose dreams are just starting to take flight. They survive the Middle Passage and arrive in Alabama as enslaved people, still clinging to the hope of one day returning home. Through incomprehensible brutality, they hold fast to their dreams, they marry, raise children, and form a legacy that still indoors an African town. Oh my goodness. Mm. And it's written in verse. Ooh. It is time to be moved. Okay, so my husband thinks I'm gonna be too spooked to get through this one, and I am setting out to prove that man wrong. I purchased, well, did I purchase? Heck no, I didn't purchase. I checked it out of the library because, side note, your girl has yet to purchase a book this year. I am working on my shelf control and I am proud to say it's going well so far. Back to business, I digress. My husband thinks that I am gonna to be too spooked to get through this. I'm proving him wrong. This book is one that I have to blame Kayla from Books and Lala for getting me to pick it up from the library. It is out there screaming, curated by Jordan Peele. Now, Key and Peele are just amazing. That show was amazing. My husband and I just end up howling laughing when we, whenever we watch it. And so Jordan Peele like, has a fan in me, okay? So when Kayla said this was going to be the February um, literary literally dead book club. I always want to say literary, but the liter lit literally dead book club selection. I was like, okay, girl, I'm here for it. I'm going to give it a whirl. These are collections of short stories, black horror stories. And I'm not a horror gal. I'm not a horror girly, but we got Jordan Peele. We got black authors. We've got books and la la. I think I'm going to do this and enjoy myself. Another book that was an inspired checkout, an inspired library checkout because of a booktuber, is one that I am super excited to read. Anything 80s or 90s has my heart. Anything about music has my heart. So, 60 songs that explain the 90s? I feel like this book was written for your girl. 
I don't know who Rob Harvilla is. Should I know who this is? I don't know. But what I do know is our buddy Rob has written this book and it says, the 1990s were chaotic, gritty, and utterly magical for music. A confounding barrage of genres and lifestyles and superstars from grunge to hip hop, from sumptuous R&B to rambunctious ska punk, from Axel to Kurt to Missy to Santana to Tupac to Britney. Oh my goodness. This is like taking me back, y'all. I, I listened to every single one of those artists. In 60 songs that explain the 90s, Ringer music critic Rob Harvilla reimagines all the earwormy iconic hits Gen Xers pine for with vivid historical storytelling, sharp critical analyses, rampant loopiness, and wryly personal ruminations on the most bizarre, joyous, and inescapable songs from a decade we both regret and entirely miss desperately. Oh my gosh. That synopsis was so perfectly written that I am just smitten with this book already. So, 1990s, let's do a throwback. I think it's time. The next book is a buddy read with a fantabulous human being and dear friend, and it is titled, Dear Black Girls, How to Be True to You. This new release for February is one that is by a WNBA superstar, Asia Wilson, I am here for it. I'm excited for it. I cannot wait to dive into this book with my buddy. So here's the synopsis. In this empowering and deeply personal collection adapted from and expanded upon the piece of the same name in the Players' Tribune, WNBA star Asia Wilson shares stories from her life. Despite gold medals, championships, and a list of accolades, Wilson knows how it feels to be swept under the rug. To not be heard, to not feel seen, to not be taken seriously. As a fourth grader going to a primarily white school in South Carolina, she was told she'd have to stay outside for a classmate's birthday party. Huh? She asked, because the birthday girl's father didn't like black people. Wilson tells stories like this, stories that held her down but didn't stop her. She shares her contribution to the talk and how to keep fighting all while igniting strength, resilience, and passion. Dear Black Girls is one remarkable author's necessary and meaningful exploration of what it means to be a Black woman in America today. And an of the moment rally cry to lift up women and girls everywhere. I have two basketball players with my daughters. I am becoming a huge fan of the WNBA. I am so excited for this experience. I hope I can share some of these words with my children. I am so excited to be inspired and empowered. So I feel like I've talked about Kayla from Books and Lala quite a bit lately, and I'm not gonna stop now because I am participating in her Buzzwordathon for the very first time. And February is all about reading a book with in the title. I found this to be perfect timing because one of my all time Favorite romance authors, Tia Williams, is debuting, launching, gifting us with a love song for Ricky Wilde. So Tia Williams is responsible for Seven Days in June, which had me just like, whoo! And it was one of the books actually that inspired me to start this booktube channel, because I was like, I gotta talk about this book. And now our girl is back. I also read her novel, A Perfect Find, that came out before Seven Days in June and ended up being a Netflix film. I watched the show, movie, whatever you wanna call it. It was a good time and I'm ready for some more good times. Thanks to our girl, Tia Williams. Leap years are a strange, enchanted time. Oh, I see what she did there because this year's a leap year. The book debuts in February. Okay, girl. And for some, even a single February can be life changing. Ricky Wilde has many talents, but being a wild isn't one of them. As the impulsive artistic daughter of a powerful Atlanta dynasty, she's the opposite of her famous socialite sisters. Where they're long stemmed roses, she's a dandelion, an adorable bloom that's actually a weed, 
<laughs> Born to float wherever the wind blows. In her bones, Ricky knows that somewhere a different, more exciting life awaits her. Hmm. Hey, who's going to help her see that exciting life? Hmm, let's read on. When Miss Della invites her to rent the bottom floor of her Harlem brownstone, Ricky jumps at the chance for a fresh beginning. She leaves behind her family, wealth, and chaotic romantic decisions to realize her dream of opening a flower shop. And just beneath the surface of her new neighborhood, the music stories and dazzling drama of the Harlem Renaissance still simmers. One evening in February, as the heady, curiously off-season scent of night-blooming jasmine fills the air, Ricky encounters a handsome, deeply mysterious stranger who knocks her world off balance in the most unexpected way. Set against the backdrop of modern Harlem and Renaissance glamour, a love song for Ricky Wilde is a swoon-worthy love story of two passionate artistes drawn to the magic, romance, and opportunity of New York and whose lives are uniquely and irreversibly linked. I think my hands are going to be linked to that book and I am so excited about it. All right, folks, that wraps up my reading plans for February. We're missing the two books that I have yet to get my hands on, but let me tell y'all something. My hands will be on them books before you know it. So what are your reading plans for this month? Let me know. I love hearing from you. And also find out what else I've been up to since the new year has began by watching some of my videos from the weeks prior. And until next time, happy reading. Bye.